Okay, so uh, this will be the last of the error view. Uh, just going over equations and formulas. Um, equations of lines and some random formulas that we've gone through uh, from the year. So midpoint formula, I'm just going to take the average of the numbers. If I have uh, x and a y, I want to find the midpoint. I'm just going to take the average of the x and the average of the y's. So for these, uh, all I have to do is just add together the numbers and divide by 2. So negative 4 plus 9 divided by 2. Negative 4 plus 9 gives me 5. 5 divided by 2 gives me 2.5. And then here, uh, do the same thing with my x's. So negative 3 plus 2 divided by 2. And then negative 6 plus negative 1 divided by 2. And so for my x's, negative 3 plus 2 gives me negative 1. So I get negative 0 0.5. And then uh, negative 6 and negative 1 give me negative 7 divided by 2 gives me negative 3.5. That's my midpoint. Uh, so you can memorize the distance formula, or what we can do is, um, so if you want to memorize it, that's totally fine. Uh, I'm going to teach by using the Pythagorean theorem just to, um, so it's kind of one less thing for us to have to memorize. So again, when I'm doing this, if I want to find the distance, I can do find the distance squared is equal to, um, the change in my x squared plus the change in my y squared. So for this one, um, my x's go from 6 to negative 3. So the difference between 6 and negative 3, to get from 6 to negative 3, I have to go 9 spaces, like on a graph. For my y's, for go from 5 to 4, uh, it's just a change of 1, so it's 1 squared. So I have d squared is equal to 81 plus 1, so d squared is equal to 82. And then I can take the square root of both sides and get that d is equal to 9.06. Same thing with this one. Um, the distance squared is going to be equal to, so the change in my x's. Uh, to get from negative 3 to negative 6, that's a difference of 3. To get from 12 to negative 1, that's a difference of 13. And so d squared is equal to 9 plus uh, 169. So that gives me 178. So when I take the square root of both sides, I get d, the distance is equal to 13.34. Uh, with equations of lines, um, so these are going to be equations that you will have to memorize. Uh, so really important is this point slope. That's going to be one that we use with equations. Remembering that parallel lines are the same slope and perpendicular lines have opposite reciprocal slopes. So change the sign and then flip it. So uh, for this first one, uh, I want to find the uh, equation that's parallel to the line. So when we did this, um, the way that we did it was uh, I'd have my given information. So given information with this is that I have the equation y is equal to 2x plus 2, and the slope of that line is 2. And so the equation for my line, I want my line to be parallel, so which means I want it to have a slope of 2 as well, and then I want it to go through the ordered pair 3, 2. So when I do this, I want to plug it into y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So y minus 2 is equal to 2 parentheses x minus 3. So y minus 2 is equal to, distribute the 2, I get 2x minus 6. And then add the 2 to the other side, you get y is equal to 2x uh, minus 4. With the second one, uh, so writing an equation that's perpendicular, again, the given information is that I have an, uh, 
have y is equal to negative 3 fourths x plus 3. The slope of that line is negative 3 fourths. And so my line, I want it to be perpendicular, which means that I want to have a slope that's opposite reciprocal, which is 4 thirds. And then I want to go through the ordered pair negative 4, 2. So I go y minus my y coordinate, which is 2, is equal to 4 thirds, times x minus my x coordinate, which is negative 4, so it turns it into a plus 4. So when I do this, I can distribute, so I get y minus 2 is equal to 4 thirds x, uh, plus let's, 16 thirds, so that would be 5 and 1 third. 16 thirds, yeah, 5 and 1 third. And then I can add the 2 to the other side to get y is equal to 4 thirds x plus 7 and 1 third. So figuring out whether they're parallel, perpendicular, or neither, I want to use my slope formula. So I can name these 1 and 2. Go y, uh, subtract my y's, so negative 4 minus 3 over negative 1 minus negative 3. So I get negative 7 over, oops, turns into a plus sign, over 2, which gives me negative 3.5. Second one, 1 and 2, negative 4 minus 5 over 2 minus negative 1, gives me negative 9 over 3 gives me negative 3. So negative 3 and negative 3.5, uh, those aren't perpendicular, they're not parallel either, so these ones are going to be neither. With this one, again, figure out whether they're parallel, perpendicular, or neither. Um, so I would go 1 and 2, subtract the y's, so negative 4 minus 2 over 0 minus negative 4. So I get negative 6 over positive 4, which is negative 3 halves. For the second one, again, uh, 1 and 2. So I'll go 3 minus negative 3 over 4 minus negative 5. That would give me 6 over 9, which reduces down to 2 thirds. So my, uh, if I look at my, compare my slopes together, uh, these two slopes are the uh, flipped over versions of each other, and they are also uh, different signs, so these ones are going to be perpendicular to each other. With trig, we've got SOHCAHTOA that will be given to you on the air test. So if I want to figure out what x is, I want to use the two other numbers that I'm given. So from my 54 degree angle right here, uh, x is adjacent. 17 is my hypotenuse, and so I'm going to use cosine, so I can go cosine of 54 is equal to uh, x over 17. Always multiply by whatever's on the bottom, so in this case it's going to be 17. And so when I do 17 times the cosine of 54... get 9.99 and then if I wanted to figure out what uh, W was so I could use W 54 and 17 uh, it's opposite and hypotenuse so when I would do that I would use sine so I go sine of 54 is equal to W over 17 I multiply both sides by the bottom, which is 17. So 17 times the sine of 54 is equal to, and I get W is equal to 13.75. The next one to find an angle. Uh, what I can do is, again, I want to go from the angle that I'm finding and then the two side lengths that I'm given. So this is opposite 
this is adjacent. And so from the angle, so I'm going to go tangent. So tangent of x is equal to uh, 9 over 10. Opposite over adjacent. So I can do that. I can do inverse sine, so second sine of 9 over 10. So I get angle x is equal to 41.99 degrees. Last couple problems here. Um, again, find the area of the shaded sector. So area of a sector, I'm going to use the formula that I have up at the top. I'm going to take the measure of the arc, divide it by 360, and multiply it by uh, this piece of my formula, which is the area formula. So I'm, in this case, I want to f my arc is 72, so 72 divided by 360, and then times pi times my radius, which is 15 squared. So I do 72 divided by 360 times... Pi, there we go, times 15 squared. And when I do that, I get 141.37. And again, that is uh, its area, so I'm going to use square centimeters. And then the last one is I want to find the length of the major arc YPX. So go from Y through P to X. And so I can use, um, take the measure of the arc and then multiply it by the circumference. So I can go 240 divided by 360 times 2 pi times my radius, which in this case is 15. So I can go 240 divided by 360 times 2 pi times my radius, or yeah, times my radius, which is 15. And I get 62.8. Three, and again, this is just the length of that uh, arc, so it's just going to be centimeters because I'm talking about a length.